The life of this world is nothing in comparison to the life of the hereafter. The experiences, happiness, and sorrows of this life are microscopic in relation to the afterlife. The phenomenon commences when the soul exits the body. At such a crucial stage, there are two groups, the fortunate ones and the wretched ones. The fortunate ones are received like kings. Hundreds of angels receive him. Fragrance surrounds them and light engulfs them. They are escorted to Almighty Allah Ta'ala in a convoy of light comprised of the angels. As for the wretched ones are faced with difficulties. From the moment they sight the hereafter unfolding, repulsive black angels, rotten smell, and fire grasps them. Their souls are torn out of their bodies and driven to Almighty Allah. Once the soul exits the body, it enters inner space, barzakh. This is another world and realm together. This is the intermediary state between the two worlds. The Quran says, until when death comes to one of them, he says, my Lord sent me back so that I may do some good I didn't do in the world. But nay, these are mere words which he utters. And behind them is a barzakh until the day of their resurrection. Our beloved Prophet ﷺ told us, Verily, the grave is the first step in the stages of the hereafter. If one finds salvation at this stage, the succeeding stages become easy for him. And if he does not find salvation at this stage, what follows this stage is very hard upon him. I have never seen a sight more horrible than that of the grave. On the authority of Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet ﷺ explained that when a slave of Allah the Almighty is put in his grave and his companions leave and he can hear the sound of their footsteps, two angels will come to him and make him sit and ask, what did you say about this man? That is Muhammad ﷺ. The faithful believer will say, I testify that he is a slave of Allah and his messenger. They will say to him, look at your place in hell. Allah has given you a place in paradise instead of it. So he will see both places. Qatada, may Allah be pleased with him, mentioned that they were informed that his grave would be made spacious. Then Qatada went back to the narrations of Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, who said that a hypocrite or a non-believer will be asked, what did you used to say about this man? That is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will reply, I do not know, but I used to say what the people used to say. They, the angels, will wish him evil. Then he will be hit with iron hammers and he will give a cry that everything near him will hear except the jinn and human beings. We can learn from a hadith from Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to ask his companions who has seen a dream today it was a part of prophethood to see dreams one day Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw a dream he told his companions last night angels came to me in my dream they took me into Barzakh we reached a place I saw a man on the floor lying down on his back. Another man was standing above him with a huge stone. He threw the huge stone and crushed the other man's head. He would then go to pick up the stone and by the time he got back, the laying man's head was restored and he would continue this action. I asked the angels, who is this man? 
and why is this happening to him? The angels told me to move on, to move on. I then passed a man who had a hook in his hand. He placed the hook in another man's mouth and tore the side of his face. He did this to both sides of his face repeatedly. I asked the angels, who is this man? And why is this happening to him? The angels told me to move on, move on. After this, I reached a man who was swimming in a lake of blood. Another man put stones in the swimming man's mouth and made him swim to the other side. He did this repeatedly. I asked the angels, who is this man? And why is this happening to him? The angels told me to move on, move on. I reached a place where we saw men and women who were unclothed inside a huge burning oven. They were hanging in there and the fire kept burning them repeatedly. I asked the angels, who are these people? The angels told me to move on again. We then saw a beautiful tall man with a white beard. He had youngsters running all around him in a beautiful garden. I asked the angels, who is this man? And who are these children? The angels told me to move on. We then saw a group of people one side of their face the most beautiful I had ever seen, whilst the other side was the most awful I had ever seen. These group of people walked to a river, bathed, and then suddenly their whole face was the most beautiful I had seen. I asked the angels again, who are these people? They told me to move on, move on. We finally came to a man with a revolting face and he did not smile at all. When I asked the angels, who is this? They told me to move on. Finally, I said to the angels that I saw many strange things tonight. Explain these things to me. The angels then informed me. The man having his head crumpled by a huge stone was a man who used to sleep past his prayers deliberately. The man having his face torn by a hook was a man who used to spread lies and rumors about others. The man swimming in a blood of lake with stones in his mouth used to take interest. Riba. The men and women in the huge oven were those who used to commit fornication and adultery. The group of people who bathed in a river and became beautiful were those who did not have enough good deeds to enter paradise. The beautiful tall man with a white beard was Prophet Ibrahim salam, And the youngsters running around him were those who died before reaching maturity. The man with a revolting face who did not smile was the guardian of hellfire, Malik. He has never smiled since hellfire was created. The treatment one receives in inner space, Barzakh, is a reflection of one's deeds and actions in this world. If a person was an obedient slave of Almighty Allah, he will be entertained with royalty. If he was anything to the contrary, words cannot describe his ordeal. Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziyyah rahimahullah explains the condition of the souls in this intermediary realm and his renowned work Kitab al-Ruh. He mentions that everyone's soul is in the following different stations within their inner space. One, Illiyin, the highest station. This station is exclusive for the prophets, alayhim salam. Even in this station, there are different ranks and spheres. Two, in green birds. These are the souls of the martyrs who did not have any debt outstanding. Some will not receive the station due to the debts they owe. Three, country yards at the gates of paradise. The souls of the pious believers will dwell here. Four, graves. Souls of a percentage of the righteous believers will be in their respective graves. Number five, earth. A number of wretched souls will be constrained to the earth. They will not be privileged to go to the heavens. Number six, 
cauldrons. The souls of the fornicators will be gathered in these huge cauldrons. Number seven, rivers of blood. The souls of the evil ones will be drowning in rivers of blood while being pelted with boulders. Number eight, Sijin. The souls of the disbelievers will be shackled in this realm, which is situated beneath the seventh earth. The higher the station, the more the soul will be entertained with the blessings of Allah. Likewise, the lower the station, the more wrath and torment will be let loose on the soul. In the reports which have come down to us from the Holy Prophet during the Battle of Badr, a number of the prominent leaders of Quraysh were slayed. When fighting was over, the Prophet ordered their bodies to be thrown into a well near Badr. Then the Prophet himself went to that well and putting his head inside the well and addressing the dead, saying, We have found that what Allah had promised to us has come true. Have you also got what he had promised to you? Some of the companions of the Prophet said, Prophet of Allah, do you talk with those who have been slain and are dead? Do they hear what you say? The Prophet said, now they hear better than you. From this tradition and other similar traditions, we can see that in spite the separation between the body and the soul with death, the soul does not totally sever its relation with the body. Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said, When a man dies, his good deeds come to an end, except three, ongoing charity, beneficial knowledge, and righteous offspring who will pray for him. Commenting on this hadith, Imam al nawawi may Allah have mercy on him, said, The scholars said, The meaning of this hadith is that the deeds of the deceased come to an end as soon as he or she dies and the renewal of rewards ceases for him or her except in these three cases because he or she is the cause of them his or her offspring is counted among his or her earnings the knowledge that he or she leaves behind through teaching or writing ongoing charity that is a waqf Islamic endowment Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him said among the acts and good deeds that will reach a believer after his death are knowledge which he learned and then spread a righteous son whom he leaves behind a copy of the Quran that he leaves as a legacy a mosque that he built a house that he built for wayfarers, a canal that he dug, or charity that he gave during his lifetime when he was in good health. These deeds will reach him after his death. We will also depart this transient phase to join the Barzakh. We are encouraged to think about death over and over again and visit graveyards to keep us back on track and assess our current relationship and state with Allah. Don't let the evil spirits keep you busy with all the worldly needs of this world. Remind yourself, especially your loved ones and the others around you, that death is just around the corner. We must do more to become better servants and faithful followers of Allah.